I look like I'm about to make some Jolo. Do you want Jolo? <laughs> I look like <laughs> it's my Jolo joint. I got the Jolo joint on. Nigga look like he about to make. Hello. I am very happy to be here. This is a very lovely country. I got my Joe Love shirt on. This is my Joe Love joint. <laughs> I got that Joe Love shirt on, baby. Look like I'm finna make some Joe Love and rice. Thank you, Danielle. You like you like my Joe Love shirt. This my this my Joe Love joint. Oh yeah, it's a whole bunch of buck dancing there before the rig going on. That's our hero, what up, bro? Trill will what it do. True, where you say I got my Joe Love shirt on. Man, what's up, y'all? Smash the like, or you, or you a part of Pauly Malinati's motherfucker Butter Biscuit Brigade. You about to go over Pauly Malinati house and eat garlic bread and hate on black men. That's what you about to do. Smash the light. Or you going over Pauly Malinaji house to eat garlic bread and hate on black men. Breath smelling like garlic knots this morning. Yeah, that's what she went to do. Smash the light. Or you was over Tim Bradley house eating butter biscuits with him and Shakur Stevenson. Steve, you get your wrench for that, cause that that was funny as shit. My nigga said, <laughs> "Yeah, they got extra marinara." And garlic butter dripping all down they chin. Fuck them, ain't it? Right, I look like a, I want justice. Because we speaking about justice. <laughs> stay, stay ready. You know I'm going to be preaching the good shit today. Justice. I had to put the motherfucker Joe Law shirt on for y'all today. Fuck that. You know. Oh, shit. Y'all got to make sure y'all go put something in my brother's Stay Ready Cash out for his 40th birthday. Holler at the Brody. These niggas going to the court. They go. These Pecklewoods going to the court. Now, I watched the fight. Full disclosure, I was watching the Lakers get swept. I fell asleep. And then... I woke up and heard Haney won. I heard 
A lot of cooning and I heard she could see. So I had Lomachenko at eight four. I was like, but he be hating. He been hating as of late. I don't know why. Smash the light, or you was over motherfucking. <laughs> Smash the light, or your ass was over um, Tim Bradley house. Eating motherfucking avocado wraps with his white wife. Hating on Devin Haney. That's what you do. I got seven avocado wrap eaters in this motherfucker. Smash the light. You hating bastard. You mad at the Instacart dude. He a black dude. A black American. We don't really eat avocado. We don't know if they rotten or not, bitch. I throw this bitch at your door. <laughs> bitch, I will throw this shit at your door. You lucky it's COVID, bitch. I'll hit you with this, bitch. Bitch, I hit you in your forehead with this avocado. You gave me that bad report. Bitch, you lucky as cold. Anyway, my bad. Let's get back to Buck Dads and Brad. So, I finally watched the fight twice. Both times Devin Haney won, while one time I must admit, with all the commentating, I I literally wanted to put a to put a hot rock through the TV. I wanted to grab the hammer and go to work on my TV, fill it full of holes. Cause Tim Bradley and them were undoubtedly look. You wouldn't have known that the champion was Devin Haney. All they talked about was Lomachenko. Anything he did. Everything he did. And I was like, damn. You ain't see these body shots he hitting this motherfucker with? It was clear to me. Definitely with the sound down. But even with the sound up that he was imploring the McCallum strategy. For those who don't know, the body snatcher Mike McCallum. That's who he was fighting like that night. Most of his power shots, Devin Haney, he being Devin Haney, were ripping shots, boom, right up here in the solar plexus, in the kidneys, in the gut, in the liver. Lomachenko was all knotted up at the end of the fight. But he was pissing blood, too. Y'all don't see that today. Devin Haney was concentrating on a serious body attack that would limit the foot movement and that angles of Lomachenko and to a degree it did he didn't have the bounce after round four he, he still slid he moved but he didn't bounce as much to my brother Blue Blood's uh, point Blue Blood Boxing he was talking about a lot of the pity pat robot shots you were seeing, people was chanting, they was getting close. But if he threw five shots, one and a half landed. No bull. If he threw five shots, one and a half landed. And CompuBox lies because they had Devin Haney landing eight body shots to none by like round three or four. And I kept that in my mind because I was like, well, shit, I counted 10. 
I counted 10 vicious body shots. Y'all only got eight. And I said, and Lomachenko has thrown one because he threw one back. It was a close fight. It was a very competitive fight. But it was a fight that Devin Haney won. I think people were giving motherfucker... Uh, they were giving... Uh, Lomachenko... What's up, Shirley? People were giving Lomachenko credit for standing in there and fighting. Really, they so a lot of those punches were not landing. He was standing there and throwing, but it don't count if all of, like I saw a sequence where he threw a, a left boom boom, and I was like, "Ooh, that was nice," but he only hit Devin once. Devin got under everything else. Then he caught him with an uppercut. I said, oh, that was nice. But he threw a hook after it. Devin got under it. The uh, other joint, he parried it, and it slid off him. I was like, yeah, y'all cheering. All that shit ain't lying. He just threw a lot, so, so something will land. And then a lot of it didn't hurt. Then let's get to the elephant. A lot of it didn't hurt. Did Tim Bradley, the man who got the, you got, you the dude who beat Pacquiao and you complain about, what's up, Brody? Tim Bradley is a piece of shit. Because when people say he robbed Pacquiao when he won, that bogus ass decision. And he talked about how people did him. Now he turns around and does the same thing. What's up, Felix? When you think about it, anybody remember that? Remember when Bradley beat Manny Pacquiao and people was like, he robbed Pacquiao. That was a horrible decision. And he came back, man, the way the people treated me and the way people was talk about I didn't really win. I looked at that fight. I won. I looked at that fight. I won. So I'll fight him again and then you start making excuses. That was Tim Bradley, right? I'm just saying I find it very hypocritical. Right. He beat Pac-Man two times and everybody said he robbed Manny Pacquiao. I know, Shirley, that's why you got to go to the 1LVZ on Instagram so you can find out because I be sending people messages through Instagram and Twitter. But you always find me. You always find out. 
So Devin Haney wins the fight. And the last and Tyson Fury isn't fighting. Yeah. You won't find one Ukrainian who supports Devin Haney. Thank you, LB. But you'll find a vast cast of butter biscuit eating buck dancers like Tim Bradley who will come out and throw the cape on for Zaddy. He's just happy to have a job. You see how fat Tim Bradley got. He eating good. I'll say whatever you want me to say, daddy. That's Tim Bradley. Didn't Teddy Atlas... Wasn't Teddy Atlas in Tim Bradley's corner at one point in time? So, you know, that's Tim Bradley. They can appeal all they want. They lost. Look at this shit. Did. Of all the shit to appeal, look at what they choosing to appeal. Then you got Pauli Malinaji. Right. Then you got Paulie, the, the Prejudice Peckerwood, Baladaji. What it do at. Now you got Paulie, the Prejudice Peckerwood, Malinaji. I, 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 I mean, this is why white guys don't watch boxing because. Hold up. You know those were white dudes judging boxing. For the life of me, what color was those boxing judges? <laughs> what color? Did we petition when Floyd beat Canelo and that white lady still had Canelo winning? Did we petition? When we clearly saw What's that what's that boy name? I don't forgot his name because he ain't boxed this. Oh, is Iris Landy Laura? When we saw Iris Landy Laura beat uh Canelo Alvarez. Ain't nobody protest. We took it.
Ain't nobody protest. We've been robbed several times. Sweet Pete got robbed by Chavez. Ain't nobody protest. All these brothers got, oh, this the worst robbery ever. This the worst robbery ever. Mary, who made the agree? Right. Right, Chavez laws. All that shit. Chavez been laws. But we will never protest. That's right, Myra. Brothers get robbed left and right. Well, the fight could have went either way. You never know. Yes, yeah, Sweet Pete got robbed by Oscar. We get robbed in the Olympics all the time. We get robbed in the Olympics all the time. If yeah, if that was the case. Right, it would have worked again. Why would boxing be corrupt? Boxing's corrupt for the black guy. What? <laughs> Pauli Molly Naji's argument is boxing is corrupt towards black guys. That's Pauli Molly Naji's logic. Boxing is corrupt for black people. The sport didn't have ripped off more great black men than anything. Right. This boxing, the sport that worked to rip more black people off than anything. That's why they go to MMA. What's up, Mr. K? That ain't why they go to MMA. They go to MMA because they best chance of beating some brothers is grabbing and holding and kicking like a bitch. Laying on the ground and putting their balls on your neck. Choking you out from behind when you homeless like Dan U. Penny. That's why they choose MMA. To learn dear life bitch ass survival tactics. They ain't even thorough with it. The thorough MMA fighters are all the black ones. Even the coon ones. If you really think about all the thorough, all the top-notch, all the greatest, 
John Jones, Israel Edania, What's the the dude the uh Francis Unganu? The best ones can box, but that if you think about it. The white ones, the be the ones that do the best, yeah, Rampage Jackson. What's the other one name that broke? Kamari Uzman. All the black ones are really like the ones fucking people up. I don't even know all of them. I just know you will hear about who the bad white boy is. Then next thing you know, it's a black dude that knocked him out. Right. Anderson Silva. Yep, to a certain degree, Tyron Woodley. Yep, Sugar Rashad Evans. It was a lot of good ones back in the day. And to this day. So, I don't get what he mean. What he mean is he's angry that it's always golf and ice hockey. Polly. Look at Dino Cicerelli. He was a beast on that ice. Maybe you should have chose hockey. Don't be mad at us. Because we great. Right. Brian Boitano. <laughs> right, Slick Tom. Why, does, why is Pauly Balanaji mad at us? Because we he could go at WWE. They don't never like no black champion. Unfortunately, the best one is The Rock. Who, let's be honest, just use black man swag to swoo the crowd. Let's be honest. Wrestling was always a white man, white trash sport. It should have been Booker T, too. Wrestling was always a white man, white trash sport. The crossover appeal came when black people was drawn to it. And not just like regular house, in the house. I'm talking about in the street black kids. When you got niggas on the block, it doesn't matter what you, you're like, God damn. Hustlers is watching WWE. For real, you got niggas on the block selling amphetamines, crack cocaine, weed, and doing the Stone Cold Stunner. I seen it. That's what made Dusty Rose famous. Trying to still, trying to act like a black man.
Andre Williams, exactly. Yes, he do. And when he speak about his father, he said he was a, a man of color. He only say his father, the rock half Samoa, half black. He'll say that. Every now and then. As if them Samoans ain't black is a fuck. Look, the Rock got cuz all them cousins of the Rock. Them niggas darker than him. And if they ain't put that shit in their head, they had curly afros to the sky. Jimmy and Jay Uso got black wives. <laughs> Right, The Rock like the only one, the, all of them, don't none of them mess with nothing white. Because Rakishi been dark. You don't remember when Rakishi was one of them wild Samoans when I was younger. You was a little kid, Rakishi, when he was a little slimmer. Samu and Fatu. Rakishi is, uh, what, Samu. Rakishi twin brother is Fatu. Them niggas don't mess with, man. It's pictures of them. They look like straight niggas posing. Jail posing and shit. Right, the SST. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't like that too cool shit though. Cause Jerry Lawler is a racist motherfucker. And Brian Christopher was Jerry Lawler well, is Jerry Lawler's son. But Grandmaster Sex A. And I don't know about no Scotty too hotty. That's some a motherfucker. <laughs> right. Racist as hell. That's what I was talking about. He doing the worm. Right, New Jack. New Jack and them used to just come out. All oh, you white trash bastards. Cuss they dumb ass out. The worm. Yeah. All of a sudden, niggas start beating his ass when he tried that. That uh, worm bullshit. He W. I was like, this is some bull. Oh, God. <laughs> I tell myself, get up. You better not do that shit. I'll whoop your ass. Don't do that shit. That's how they like they niggas doing the worm. Got a bunch of goofy ass niggas on the ground doing the worm. Don't do no goofy shit like that. Rock bottom that nigga. Rock bottom that nigga. Yeah, they want him like Ron the true killer. Right, went with that jabroni ass move. That's why I was so happy when that gimmick was over. I was like, fuck him up.
He trying to beat you with that jabroni ass move. I'm going to do a racist nigga. And then they got Ron the Truth Killings. Now this nigga just a, a job. Ron the Jobber Killings. I remember one time that nigga. <laughs> Bo Dallas tell him, you never win. <laughs> Bo Dallas told that motherfucker, R-Truth, you never win. That's when he was on his winning streak. It's because you don't Bo Lee. That shit had me laugh. I said, that's a good told him he don't never win. He never went, and he don't. He's some shit. <laughs> shit, what happened to him and Bray Wyatt? You, Cause you know that's Uncle Howdy. You know Bo Dallas is Uncle Howdy. No, Ron made a bunch of money being a goddamn coon. <laughs> what the fuck you mean, man? That's not funny. Oh, sir, I'm crazy. I'm running around. I'm crazy. Oh, that's how I'm we bucking my eyes. Hey, oh, oh, I'm crazy. Oh, this how I'm going to be. Ron be bucking his eyes. Fuck is you talking about? <laughs> I said, John, vanilla ice. Hey, I remember one time Eddie Guerrero called him out one time. He said, Hey, hey, Chavito, look who it is. It's the white guy who thinks he's a rapper. I start laughing like shit. <laughs> I laughed my ass off. I said, yeah, Eddie. Call this big steroid pack of wood out. Bray Wyatt was let go again? Damn. You can't stand Santa just like Marky Mark. That's who he was. That's who he was. That's what I'm about to tell everybody. You realize he wasn't Vanilla Ice. He was Marky Mark. Another Massachusetts guy. To this day, he still keep his hair like that. Yeah, Cena did go platinum. I like Booker T. Oh, he, yeah, he did buck dance a whole lot. He did a whole lot of buck dance, especially that time with Triple A C with your little nappy head and your little sucker. Do a little spin for me, Book. Guys like you don't get to beat guys like me. I like King Booker, though. He was the greatest king of the WWE, though. King Booker was the greatest king ever. No king was better than Booker T as king. Damn. What's up, Aladdin?
Bobby Lashley to beat uh, Brock Lesnar every time. Tell me you didn't just say that. He let him just call him a nigga and shit. That blew me. I was like, oh, God, Booker T. What's going on with you, Booker T? Yeah, Bobby should have stayed with the Hurt Business. I like to see brothers doing shit together in wrestling, even if they a bunch of buck dancing ass coons like the New Day. These niggas ran around being straight buffoons playing the Christian the Christian choir music. Yeah, they canceled the Bray match. Yeah, they did. Cause Bobby Lashley wanted to do the Bray match. Man, you know how much money that match would have made? Bray Wyatt versus Bob Lash. Then the Hurt Business would have had to come back. Then he'd have built the new Wyatt fashion. WWE is a bunch of morons. WCW needs to come back. I don't know. WCW was good. But, again, their creative control was good. But they got out of hand. They started doing shit they shouldn't have done. When they did, when they did the uh, NWO, they went too far, and they didn't know how to undo it. What do I think of AE? I like AEW, but I don't know where they going. Sometimes they all over the place. It's like I like where they going right now, but let's see how they uh, write it out. And what they turn it into. Because I'm scared this could turn into another NWO. Only thing I don't like about AEW. They got that uh, track. I don't know what it is. I guess it's a trans wrestler. I'm like no. No, AEW Women Division I can't mess with uh, WWE Women Division. But Jay Cargill is that beast. And then what's the other girl they just got? The, what's her name? Chloe or whatever. And then they still got uh, Paige. Um, what's the other girl? No, I was the Wolf Pack. The first NWO had Hulk Hogan playing the da down You miss WWF. MJF is what would have happened if Tully, if he put the title on Tully Blanchard. <laughs> That's messed up. I like MJF. He don't wrestle a lot. But let me tell you, he learned Zabisco. <laughs> if 
For real, he reminded me of Larry Zabisco. You like Tully Blanchett. Tully ain't really. Tully was the TV champion for like 87 years. So. Okay. Did y'all get that guy out of here talking about his, I'm reporting your channel and getting you shut down. I'm tired of you telling the truth. And you're telling the truth. <laughs> oh, God. You think Devin Haney won? You're calling out racism. <laughs> oh, God. Gonna shut you down. Oh my God. Stop this black guy from telling the truth. <laughs> oh God, he's telling the truth. This is so racist. He's got on a he's got on a shirt. He's wearing a fucking dashiki, man. Oh God, he supports the Black Panthers. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm gonna report you, motherfucker, please. <laughs> Who's sexy? Brandon McCann's on Many Night I've Wondered. That is a hell of a question. Who is sexier, Bianca or Jade? It depends on what night what you like. Bianca. I like Jade. I like Jade. I'm sorry. Because there's one thing about Bianca I had noticed. Bianca Belair ears is like this, y'all. That's the only thing I know. I'm like, why is her ears too many headlocks? Yeah, man. I just caught that one night. I look at, Cause she got them big ass earrings and one day I said, I wonder if that's why her ears like that. No bullshit. She got some big ass ears. <laughs> that's the only thing. That's the one flaw I could find. And it was by accident, cause I saw the earrings, and then I say, I say, oh Jesus! <laughs> I do too. I like them both too, though. No, he said, but who do I gotta pick? I had to pick one. I do like both of them. Right. Cause them baby hairs on the side be and her hair. I can see. Cause that's the thing, cause on another night. Yeah, she's still fine as hell. But then on another night, I can look past it because she had a baby hairs and she had that outfit on. She got that little smile and that strut. 
And then all of a sudden, I be like, yay. Then you see Jade. And the only thing about Jade, I go, I wonder if she got hair under that wig. She always got on different stiff-ass wigs. Hope she ain't bald-headed. That's all I say. She might got the Monica McNutt cut. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. I'd like to see her as some nice cornrows. That's all. Because she be fly. That's the thing. I'm telling the truth. Shit. Jay, Jay pretty. But uh, Bianca be fly as shit. You be like, damn. <laughs> so, you know. Texas T now stop it. <laughs> but I understand what you say. <laughs> she Bianca look like she fuck you up too though. But she a pat she look like she a pat. The difference is after Bianca whoop your ass, she look like she'll pat you up and kiss you on the forehead. And the Jade whoop your ass, she gonna talk shit about it. <laughs> now beat your ass again. <laughs> she'll tell you, and I'll beat your ass again. Get your ass up. No, don't do Bianca like that. Bianca's still fine. Mm-hmm. No, nigga. I done say some outfits she done just walked out in on Raw just to let you know, bitch. And I look, I was like, that is, hey, that sister is fine. But shit. What you call it used to do that with her little skinny ass? Right now is between. For me, it's between. Sasha, Bianca, and Jade. Them three are the, the finest sisters I done seen. I can't judge the, the white women. They don't even look the same. I just seen Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus look like they doing everything to keep her together. That bitch my age. She knows <laughs> That bitch a few years younger than me. What the fuck? Naomi chocolate ass is fine. South Korea, Taiwan, Australia, Canada, yes. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Don't you? I like Taiwan, the United Kingdom, and all. Australia, 
don't you value humanity? You need to ask all them countries. Therefore, they went there and created a genocide and colonized people. Shit. Don't you? You should have thought about all of that. <laughs> Max, that made me laugh, too. Don't you? Why don't you? Don't you have a heart? You bastard. Brother, I'm just talking about, all I'm talking about is how that white supremacist man said that white people don't like boxing because black people winning. That's that's what he say, and how Tim Bradley eating butter biscuits for the man. That's really what I was talking about. You come here, yeah. I like William Regal. I like William Regal. He was acting a little moist though. William Regal was acting moist on this last. Joe, he said, like, Oh, man with the mask, you look so delicious today. I want to eat you up. You look so scrumptious. I was like, what in the fuck? <laughs> My son was like, whoa. <laughs> I said, he, he's bitchy. She does that sort of thing. That's the sort of thing. I guess you I guess you like that sort of thing. <laughs> Go watch some of them AEW joints with William Regal sits down with them. Go watch some of them AEW joints. Mind with the boss, you look so scrumptious. <laughs> what the fuck? Hello? Hello, I'll be Mr. Smith. This is Mr. Smith. Hi, Mr. Smith. This is Victoria. How are you? I'm good, Victoria. What's up? I'm calling you because you want someone to call and explain to me why you're being forced to take Wi-Fi with us. No, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to understand. I'm already, I had already had it. I, I, I didn't. I, Yeah, I know they did that yesterday. I I was working. I was already working on that. I was just trying to figure out. Yeah, what what was going on? I that's what I was saying. Can somebody explain? Yeah, yeah, I know. I had even I had even said that then. I was like, I don't understand. I'm already I already have Xfinity Wi-Fi and all of that. And, and when I saw it, well, it basically wouldn't affect me. I just thought, well, okay, basically it ain't gonna affect me. Then I thought about it. I said, hold the hell up. Why am I paying for something I'm already paying for? I was already paying for the whole time. You understand? Yeah, so I'm I'm try, I'm trying I'm just trying to figure out why I'm being double charged from somebody. So yeah, they they did that yesterday. Yeah, so you called the four four three number? No, I called Xfinity and talked to them. Okay. So you need to call the four four three number. Mm-hmm.
No, that's what I'm saying. I talked to Xfinity yesterday. They set up the credit and they um they could only they could only backdate it to a up to 120 days, and um it should be. A... Okay, I I I'm um. Do you want me to send the paper back to you? Um, nah. It... Yeah, yeah. You can just email me the number, and uh, I guess I'll call them. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. It's always a rip off. So look, my apartment complex has switched over to some policy where everybody gets Wi-Fi through the complex. You forced to pay them $52. The problem was I already had who they were switching to. So why am I giving you $52 if I'm already paying them? So I explained to him, I said, this don't make sense. It's like I'm dope, okay? ESPN has just said Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, July 29th. Who y'all got? Get my mic, CC Peterson. Finally, finally, it's happened to me right in front of my face, and I just cannot deny it. This is what we want, Skip. We want the best to fight the best. Stop ducking and dodging. Mm. I understand that you can fight this guy over here that has no chance of beating you for ten million. But go on and fight them big dogs for twenty million. Yep. Get that bread. Mm. This, 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 we gonna sell it now. Mm. But I, I'm gonna be. Let me tell you, excited. I'm gonna be there. Good. Me and the team. I'm gonna be there. This one. Skip. Think about it. We've had uh, uh, Javante Tank Davis, Brian mm. Ross, Ryan Garcia, uh, Haney just fought uh, Lomachenko. He did. Oh, Lomachenko. Are we good? Yeah. This, this, Skip. This is how it's supposed to be. I remember when Hagler fought Hearn. When, ha I, I, when, I was there. When, when Hagler fought Sugar Ray, Tommy Hearns fought Sugar Ray. I was there. In the 70s, the heavyweights, mm. Foreman and Frazier and Ali and Norton, Ernie Shavers, they fought. Ain't no ducking and dodging. Ain't no, well, I'm, nah, I ain't fighting him, man. He scared what has happened. You know what has happened? One of the best things and worst things that's ever happened in boxing was Floyd Mayweather mm. because they want to protect that old. Yeah. It used to be skipping. We didn't judge the fight. We didn't say, oh. Because Muhammad Ali lost the fight, and all of a sudden he's not a great fighter. It's almost like if you lose, your greatness is gone for perpetuity. You never can be great because you lost the fight. Yeah. And so guys duck and dodge. But man, I'm trying to this <laughs> man. I'm gonna be there. This one, I don't care what it costs. I'm gonna be there. See, that's why they go to the final game to save my money. I knew something big was oh, coming. Really? Yeah, I knew something big was well, coming. This one could cost you. Well, I know, that's okay. I'm good. I saved my pennies. I'm good. I'm waiting on it. Save for a rainy day. It's raining. What's happening? Okay. Earl, scale of one to ten, TC. I'm very excited. I want I'm Earl. I'm a nine, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> why? It took too long. They're still in it, Brian. Skip me good. On and, and on and on and on and on. It's rival promoters, and now they're kind of co-promoters. Right. They're, they're kind of they're right. kissing and hugging promoters. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> Bud Crawford, as you call him, Terrence Crawford, is he, he's going on thirty-six years of age. He, he's at the back end of right. his prime, but I'm going to give you his prime. Right. This has taken a long time. Right. And Errol Sprint, Spence Jr., has gone through a life-threatening car wreck yeah. in 2019, and then he had surgery for a detached retina in August of 21. It, it is career-threatening, I got to tell you. Yeah. Hopefully, he's going to come all the way back, but those two scenarios took a lot out of him. I, I hope he's what he was in his 20s. Would I have rather these guys have fought at 23 and 25? Right. Sure, I would have. Well, yeah. Yeah, we would have liked to see uh, uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao no. fight five, six years sooner. They were 
Floyd was 38, Manny was 35. Yeah. Okay, well, that's like over the hill. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. It's, we, get them, get them. Uh, I want to hear everybody's opinion. Floyd, shit. Now we got something. Okay. But like you said, it was both guys. Was, I, I think I think Floyd was past his prime. He was, yeah. So to me, from what I've seen of Errol Spence Jr., he is the more talented fighter of the two. But the other guy is pound for pound, ranked number one for a reason because he's the better. <laughs> yeah, I'm an Earl guy too. I mean that he's the better boxer. Bark, bark. He's just the better boxer. That's why this shapes up for all time greatness. I got it. I got it. So I'm, I'm with your excitement level. I just, I'm, I'm a little drained from it because it just kept going. It felt like it went on forever yeah. to get to this. Yes. Point. Can we remember we talked about it? You're like, man, when are we gonna see? When are we gonna see Bud and Errol Spence? You were out of your mind. Yeah, I'm like, come on, bro. Why y'all ducking and dodging each other? Y'all wait till one of you guys are forty, the other guy gonna be forty three, and tomorrow, okay, let's have a fight. No, ain't nobody. I thought Haney won. I th the Lomo fight. No, it was the Haney fight. Haney was the champion. How the hell you see? That's what I mean. That's why I don't. That's why I watch it with the sound down. See, my, Lamont, that, that propaganda get to his head. It was the Loma fight. I was watching it because I love Loma. I think body shots count. And yeah, you could throw five punches and land one and a half. But that's exactly what you're doing. Throwing five punches and landing one and a half. He started too slow again. He was giving away rounds. I saw it kind of the same way he lost the Tiafimo fight. He came on too late. He was more active than he was in the Tiafimo fight. That's true in the beginning. He was more active. But it wasn't he wasn't landing shit. He was, and that that counts too. That's effective defense. Cause he wasn't just throwing windmills. Almost KO'd him, don't count for that. Just mean you won the round. Almost, what is almost KO? Did he hit the ground? Did he hit the ground? Did he hit the ground? Almost KO is a drop. I know what drop. <laughs> what is an almost KO? How do you score that? As a he landed a good shot. Is that what you? Mean? What is See, I'm listening to Lamont, but I know Lamont don't know much about boxing. When he he almost KO'd him. What is almost KO? He did not outland him every round. Not the first, not the second. He outthrew him, but he didn't outland him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, almost KO is still a 10-9 round, Lamont. <laughs> yeah, the 10th and the 11th, but you know, the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, you should, you got to land clean shots in them. To, watch this. To the body and the head. Not just the head. To the body and to the head. And I'm talking about the cleaner, most pure, the mm, shots, especially in the beginning, to the body. He was hitting them with the same shots Tank hit uh, Garcia with. Is that his name? What's that his name? Whatever that boy. He lost round one. 
See, that's what, what that's what you wrong. Cause he lost round one. What he doing round one? He caught like nine rights to the body. Clean. He didn't land no shots. <laughs> hey Lamont, since you want to talk about fake stats, watch this. CompuBox stats say that Lomachenko landed 27% less than what he normally lands at 27%. He normally landed 48, so my bad, 21%. So, yeah, you lunching. He was missing a whole lot of... See, that's what I mean. That's why people like you can't score boxing. Those shots were not landing. He do five shots. All that, none of that shit was like, he was getting under that shit. One joint, he threw one, two, a hook and an uppercut. The uppercut was the only thing that caught him. So no, uh-uh. Yeah, I don't go by CompuBox stats too because they lied by round three and said the body punch count was eight to zero. I clearly had counted 10 power body shots that he had landed on him. I'm talking about digging. Mm. Mm. Jones. When he messed, he got, he pop, pop, bang. I was like, ooh. I said, that's right. Stop him from moving them feet so much. No, I ain't see him getting beat up. Not the entire second half of the fight. But again, that's your opinion. But the difference between me and you is my opinion was the right opinion. Yours was the wrong. And the proof is in the pudding. Know why? Devin Haney. Is the winner. Yep. No matter how much you complain, no matter what you think or what you say or what you believe you saw, that's not what me or three judges said. Not one thought. <laughs> I'm just saying not one of them saw it y'all way. So you saying a black man got two white judges. You saying a black man got two white judges. This ain't the channel for you right now, Lamont. <laughs> this is not right now, Lamont. That's not true. Tyson Fury is the champ. Usyk is the champ. They're old. That's not true. Terrence Crawford is 36. That's not true. Lomachenko ain't 59. Don't hurt by If that's the case, if that's the case, then Jamal Charlo, when he knocked out the 18-year-old younger and fucked his career up, they wouldn't have did that. That's, that's not the truth. Sorry, no. <laughs> We're sorry. The number you have dialed does not previously work. Not always. 
Not always. And, and Usyk don't always win. And Usyk is the champion too. He has all the belts when Tyson Fury retired. He won by decision. He old. He don't win by knockouts. It just don't hold. It just don't, man. Right? And then again, like I said, you didn't answer the Terrence Crawford. It's 36. See, the, that's not going to work. You didn't answer that like the Charlos and um, fucking Lomachenko like the same age. That don't hold, bro. It don't. It don't. That sound nice to a dummy, but not against me. Crawford ain't about to get cheated. He about to get beat by a better fighter. Just like Loma got beat by a better fighter. It happened. It, it happened. Yeah. Look, this, this, don't do it, LeVar. Don't do it. Lamont, don't make me do it. Don't do it, LeVar. <laughs> See, it's just like when I saw your basketball team, I knew you wasn't going to win that tournament. But you didn't. Just like when you saw that fight. I know who won. You don't. I understand. We can leave it at that. <laughs> that's, that's how we settle that. When I saw your basketball team, I said, ain't no way these motherfuckers, these motherfuckers just came down here to visit. So what? Get yeah, better boxer don't always win. <laughs> yeah. Ali was the better boxer. Frazier won. Sugar Ray was the better boxer. Roberto Duran won. Sugar Ray was a better boxer. Hearns beat him. They gave it a draw. But he said Hearns won. He said that at the end of the fight. Hearns won. I know I lost that fight. Better boxer don't always win. But I hear you. I understand. I'm not saying that he can't win the fight. I'm just saying I'm picking Earl Spence. And it don't have to be a cheat because he lost. He lost. It's certain things. This ain't the amateurs. Lomachenko think this the amateurs. And a lot of his fans do too. Body shots count. Shakur Stevenson, Tank Davis. He could rematch Lomachenko since everybody think he lost. It's a lot of other, yeah, it's other fights. It was a lot of other big fights to be made. He could move up to 140, fight the winner of the Josh Taylor joint. Go up there, fight Teofimo Lopez, whether he win or lose. Beat Teofimo Lopez. Um, get a good fight at 141st, then fight Teofimo. Then go after Josh Taylor. Get all the belts at 140, or he can stay at 135, clean that out, fighting these great fighters like Shakur and Tank, or he can go up to 140. So, man, it's not. Where does he go from here? It's not. I saw where him and Shakur Stevenson was going to go since they were 16. Ugh. 
the tank could knock everybody out. So you you preaching to the choir with that. That's not the point. And don't say what he won't do. He probably won't do it now. Because he won't get another bigger fight. Or if the money right, they rematch the fight. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. You got to understand. That's the thing with Devin Haney. You got to understand. I understand where you're coming from. They keep bullying him into rematches. I'm like, damn, I don't want to wait. He wanted to go fight Lomachenko two fights ago. He got bullied into another fight. So I'm not mad that I got a champion that's willing to fight other fighters. He won. It's what it is. It ain't like Lomachenko was fighting a whole bunch of niggas that was good until, you know. Only reason he fought Teofimo Lopez is because he didn't want to fight Devin Haney. So, yeah. So we got to be fair. It was a good fight. It was an entertaining fight. Lomachenko definitely fought hard. I think when you talk about holding, yeah, he was tired. I think Devin Haney was tired. I think he started getting the effects of that camp and all of that because I think he need to move up. I think Devin Haney need to move up. Shakur and them need to stay at 135. Yeah. I think he need to move up. I think he'd be more comfortable with a heavier weight. And I think his punches are laying better. Because I don't think they giving him his right strength. I think that's hard on his body. For real. And he getting older. So... But we'll see. My father liked Terrence Crawford, so, yeah. Like I said, I don't think that uh, Terrence Crawford a bum. No. Shit, I think Lomachenko is a good fighter. I just don't think, I think he was overhyped. I think It's the Pacquiao effect, cause he, but all that shit ain't landing. Just cause the motherfucker patient and, <clears throat> he only threw three, but two nice joints landed. He threw eight to land one and a half. I'm not even sure if one of them landed, partial glove, We talking about Tank. Yeah, Tank will probably knock them out. I think Tank will knock all of them out. I always said that. That's a different animal. That wasn't Tank. That was Lomachenko. You talk about he almost KO'd him. That don't exist. I almost KO'd him. Right. He wasn't throwing no real body shots. Right. A lot of that shit was not landing. I was like, I was like, man, that shit ain't landing. His arms too, he jumping in. And it looked like and he jumping back with the punches. So it looked like, but none of a lot of that shit was not landing. 
get later in the rounds, yeah, he get closer. He start landing cleaner shots. Cool. He almost KO'd him. Why couldn't he finish him? I'm glad, look, I'm glad he almost KO'd him because that only count as a 10-9 round. That's what I'm saying, see? Look, niggas taking one right hand that Devin Haney throw that's good and then taking a nice left hand that Loma throw. That left worth nine Devin Haney right worth two. What? No, that's one one. <laughs> Devin Haney jam pop 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 bing. And he come up whoa 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 whoa. Seven of them landed. Devin Haney did all, got under all that and landed nine. CompuBox said, man, that ain't what I saw. What I just saw was none of that shit landed. And them just, when I went to see the Keith Thurman fight, Brandon McCann's, all I'm going to say is Lamont is the only coach in the world. When I look at his team, I know he can beat every last one of them one-on-one. -on -one. That's why they listen to him. Put it this way. It's one black guy on the team. It's the coach. That's Lamont. Brad, that coach, look, that team looked like a surf club. That's what it looked like. Where is this? Is this the Mormon League? Where is, who are they playing? That's why the first question I asked him, any local teams going to be there? I mean, black people. That's what the first thing I'm thinking. Oh, no, I think Georgetown's going to be there. I thought to myself, I said, they're going to be mostly white kids. They'll probably beat them. Duke's supposed to be, but we, we're ranked pretty high. I was like, yeah, they're they going to beat the brakes off, y'all. Beat the motherfucker breaks off, y'all. That's when I knew Lamont is a hell of a coach. He went with them. I was like, man, them. He tried to tell me this little. <laughs> this little. This dude, like my size, young brother. <laughs> Young white guy, young white Israeli guy. He said he be cuss he be cussing out all the white guys on the team, calling them racist. I said, Wow. <laughs> It'd be funny because <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, wow. The jokes write themselves. Like it's funny because once he get on the floor, <laughs> y'all all, all going to be in the same game. <laughs> Lack of self-awareness, huh? Don't worry about it. But I think he Muslim, so. Anyway. So...
But yeah, man. Much love and respect to those guys. Like I said, when I seen that team, I knew that they was going to just be visiting D.C. And he was going to have a lot of time on his hand because they, they weren't going to be nobody. <laughs> That wasn't going to be no damn. <laughs> they wasn't going to be a soul. It was not one team they was going to be. God bless him. <laughs> God bless him in all their future endeavors. But Lamont is an outstanding coach, man. And that's how I know. I think Loma won. Um, and this is the reason why I have him winning, because he almost dropped him. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean he caught him with a good punt? What, what is all? <laughs> Lamont! <laughs> now you know that's not a thing. Would you say, yeah, they just happened to be tour they were tourists who happened to be there to play a game. Yeah, it's like they schedule. Ooh. <laughs> Let's go to DC. Look here. We can play in a basketball tournament against <laughs> against the East Coast locals. Ran they ass. <laughs> Ran Lamont asking them about the motherfucking gym. <laughs> Throwing that shit in the trees out there, jump. Just <laughs> welcome to DC. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. God bless you. Good night. Gay y'all ass the Russell Simmons treatment. You know I love you, Lamont. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Look, that's fucked up. That's motivation for next season. Now you recruit some brothers. <laughs> that nigga Lamont and Compton right now. That nigga Lamont and Compton right now. <laughs> That was fun. You got it? You got it. He said, look, this is Lamont pep talk after they got ran out the gym. Well, you guys got some exercise. You got to visit the Capitol. This was a positive thing. Because, you know, Lamont is really positive. Yeah, we was together. Me and Lamont was together. <laughs> yeah, that's not even, that's not a game. And you know Lamont is a real positive guy. That's how I love him. Lamont say, hey guys. Hey guys. Don't be discouraged. They were very talented. We were missing players. Were they other white players, Lamont? Because that's why you lost. That nigga Lamont in Compton right now. Recruiting him two point guards and a motherfucker wingman. That nigga is in Jordan Downs. 
He trying to figure out how he going to get a nigga from Englewood family, Jordan Downs, and the Hoover set. All of <laughs> He trying to figure out how he going to get all three of them niggas to match. Because all them jokers he got on his team, the GPA is high. He going to get them to be the mark, and them going to be 56 and 0. I don't even know, but I, you know it's bad when Lamar said, man, they had baby Embiid on me, man. I said, no, I ain't even. You don't ask a nigga what round he got knocked out in. You know? You just know. Well, I actually did ask, well, what, what round? He said, we made it to the second round. I said, dang. <laughs> God damn, Lamont. They whooped y'all ass, man. You know, I would have, you know, they whole team look like cops to me. Is what I'm saying. It's hard to recruit kids when the whole team look like police. You get <laughs> I'm an old ass man. And the first thing I thought when I picked them up was, I don't want to go to that school. Maxwell, I'm an old-ass man. Right. Look, I'm a... <laughs> Showtime. I'm an old-ass man. When I seen them boys, the first thing I knew was, I don't want to go to this school. This is not the school for me. If that's what the basketball team looked like, Imagine what the faculty look like. <laughs> I started laughing when I gave him a ride. I said, this is the highest my credit score going to ever be. And I just laughing to myself like, oh, this racism is killing me inside. <laughs> I laughed. I kind of giggled to myself and said, all oh, this racism is killing me inside. <laughs> I no bullshit. I made that joke to myself. My credit score will never be higher than it is in this car right here. God damn. They lucky I ain't Nigerian. I just stole all their identity. My name be Connor Matthews. <laughs> yes, I am Connor Matthews. <laughs> of um, is I am from South Dakota. Right. <laughs> team full of perfect attendance. What? Lamont could add four mentally challenged players on his team, and the GPA would still be <laughs> damn near perfect. The average, the team GPA will still be damn near perfect. It's just, it's ridiculous. Like, hey, LeVar. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> when, once, when I hear my name like that, your basketball team ain't going to win. That's a stereotype, yep. There's a normally right. Fuck with Jack Harlow. 
You notice Jack Harlow only playing, only talking that shit in a movie. He ain't on no team doing that shit. He doing on. <laughs> they get paid to let him cross them over. Niggas talk about Jack Harlow played basketball with Kawhi. Man, Kawhi was literally on motherfucking uh <laughs> <laughs> Kawhi shot a, mer a commercial against Jack Harlow, y'all. When that man was on minutes restriction, he still had enough minutes. The bust Jack Harlow's ass. White folks will take a victory anyway. You see Jack Harlow can play? You saw him in that New Balance commercial? Yeah, the Clippers was playing when I seen the commercial. Kawhi was on the commercial and not on the game. Right. Getting crossed by one of Master P kids. You don't never see it. Yeah, because it's embarrassing that had Quavo from the Migos get Jack Harlow 47 and then do a mumble rap in the corner. I drop a bucket on your head. Jack Harlow, your head said cheap shit free. Busting the three in Jack Harlow face, he looking like a hoe. He can't guard me. Three in this face, he can't stop me. <laughs> Scoring the three in Versace. <laughs> Jack Hollow some doo doo. <laughs> Jack Hollow some doo doo. God me, he's some poo poo. <laughs> Cross him over, in and out, three in his face, drop three on his noodle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Quavo. That's why you don't see him in them all star games. Yeah, right. Then you had all set in the back of the all set. Jack Harlow some boo -doo, boo boo. <laughs> Crossover game doo 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 doo. <laughs> Sham guy in and out hit a three in his face three on his noodle noodle. <laughs> Ball handling this poo 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 poo. <laughs> Sorry, let me stop. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's why Paulie Malignaggi mad, man. <laughs> Just like, how they got to win? How they win in boxing? Sylvester Stallone. They got the right Rocky. They got a right of John. I can't beat you, but I got you. <laughs> it's an Italian guy. You can't beat him. He's the stallion. Hit him with a million hooks. CTE doesn't exist. We are just calling it brain damage. Rocky got his ass beat so much. Sylvester Stallone talk like that. You like, that was a movie. It was a movie about a guy getting that ass whooped. You know, so it's trouble so Let's get my ass moving. 
Think about that. <laughs> Am I the only nigga that noticed Sylvester Stallone got his ass whooped so damn much? It was after that Mr. T ass whooping showtime. So you young. Young Sylvester, he had a, hey, yo, Adrian, you know I do things. Hey, man, he used to be in other movies. Hey, Wolf God. No, I'm not going for that. Man, all of a sudden, he got that Mr. T ass whooping. You know it, but Paulie knows. Whoop this bitch ass. Getting out while you can? Don't give that sucker no stature. Give him guts. Told you I wasn't going away. And you got a big mouth right there. Why don't you come on down here and close it? Come on, about boy. T through the T through that south part. Why don't you come on down here and close it, about boy? If this little man don't want to come to me, then I come to you to bring you the truth. I was ranked number one. That means I'm the best. But this bum is taking the easy matches, fighting other bums. And that's what's, that, that was real talk. Come on, my bum. Huh. <laughs> that left hook was, <laughs> T was bringing that left hook for, T was like, huh. <laughs> that T was bringing that left hook. From back south, south side Chicago. Hey woman, <laughs> hey woman, since your old man ain't got no heart, won't you come over to my place? <laughs> yeah, I bet you just been waiting, dreaming about a real man. That man said, Mr. Tat, Mr. P, Mr. T said, strategy don't need none. My boy is so stupid and co uh, confident, he just keeps coming forward. He's tailor made for me and he's gonna get hurt. <laughs> the man, the Lord built my boy just to have his ass whooped by Clubber. According to Club, he's tailor made for me, and he's gonna get hurt. That's why I don't like Rocky Three, cause he was tailor made for T, and was supposed to get hurt. But how did he beat Mr. T, y'all? A old butter biscuit eating, a part of ass shuffling creed. Oh, Master Rocky. <laughs> Oh, Master Stallion, he beat on, he beat you down. But eyes don't, you didn't have that eyes of the tiger when you whipped on my ass. Eyes didn't have it no more, you was the greatest. Let me show you, let me show you. No, that ain't what happened, he ain't beg Apollo. Apollo went, cause Rocky was ready to go. Let me show you how to beat him. Eyes can show you. Only master eyes can show you how to beat that old. He done got way foot. He done got wayward. <laughs> I can show you how to beat that old wayward evil buck. Come on now, Master. 
eyes gonna clean you up. We gonna get hold of him now. He trying to start ruination. <laughs> that was Apollo Creed. That's how. I, that's how I kind of was glad Drago did what he did. Let's get it going, gang. Okay. Let's get it. You heard what the brother throw the damn towel. <laughs> You is kind, you is smart. You is about to get this shit off my TV. That's what you is about to do. Why is Viola Davis always snotting and crying? Oh Lord, snot running down her nose. Why is she always snotting and crying in them old movies? Snotting and shit. That made me... That... that whoever noticed that? Whoever... Shirley, stop laughing. Because you know it's the truth. I'm surprised they ain't put her in the new color purple. Snotting. Oh, no. I'm like, Jesus. Woman, <laughs> get this woman a Kleenex. <laughs> Somebody get her a Kleenex. <laughs> right. Throw the damn towel. That's what I say when Viola Davis be crying. Am I lying? Okay. So, press, if you have never saw Viola Davis snotting and crying, press one. But if I'm telling the truth, press two, please. Because I know, and it's several moves. I'm like, every time this bitch start crying, this bitch nose start running. She's snotting and shit. I'm like, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> this is not. This shit ain't it. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. Thank you. Just like every, any movie she shared a tear. She probably did it in a woman. We're going to enslave those. We're going to sell them into slavery. <laughs> She's snotting and shit. Right, I'm like, damn, she gotta stop with this snot. This bitch of sinuses is horrible. See, snotting all the time, <laughs> snorting snot. What the hell? That shit is. <laughs> yeah, that's not crying. Is <laughs> we like ah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yay, I think I, I think I seen her nose glistening at the award show too. Nostrils just a glistening. I'm gonna tell you something, I don't be trusting nobody with nostrils that be uh snotting on it. Don't trust them their nostrils over yonder. 
They drop so much snot it'll make you wonder. Sorry, let me I don't, I don't like the herd because they got this sellout Jason McIntyre on him. He was up here talking about how uh, Colin Cowherd said, one of my greatest places to live, Chicago. He said, Chicago? Chicago's a war zone. He's like, what are you talking about? No, it's not. I, what? Aren't you listening? Chicago? It's one of the worst places to live. No, it's not. Chicago's great. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's a white guy. <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> yes, he's half black, and I think I think he's like black or something else. But yes, Jason McIntyre is a. And this was a white guy telling him. Mm-hmm. TYT did a video on him. Yeah, yeah, saying that shit. I saw that shit. TYT Sports. I saw that. That's what made me look. I was like, oh, Really? But I remember seeing that live when he told him. He was like, no, it's not. What the fuck are you talking about? Now, I can say that. You know why I can say that? Because those places where it is going down, them the places I really want to go to. Colin Cowherd is telling the truth. He like, not for no white people, it ain't. Oh, yeah. If you going to the hood, getting in the hood shit, yeah, Chicago like that. I ain't going to Chicago for that. And I can go in them neighborhoods, and they ain't going to fuck with me. Now, me... I'm going to go to the Hurls, chick. I'm going to want to go to the old blocks. I'm going to want to go to the 63rd. I'm going to want to go to the 51st and Cottage Grove. I'm going to want to go to them joint. I'm going to want to be in there. I'm going to want to be in them because that's where the people who like me are. It just so happened I'm from D.C., so I don't care where you from. Motherfuckers front and light, they right there in them trenches. There's people who live in Chicago who be in the chat room all the time. They ain't dead. I hate that propaganda shit. Of course, you got some knucklehead youngers running around doing that dumb shit. That's everywhere. But the vast majority of Chicagoans are decent, hardworking, good black people who just trying to uh, have a better life and economically being sanctioned and squeezed out of position. But that's another story for another time. Right, that's everywhere. It's only unique due to the demographics and the geography and the location of the place we're talking about. 
But basically, it's all the same. Like, here, it's more like a California approach. Now they just dumping a bunch of people you never saw before on top of you. Who know nothing about where they are. And no respect to how or why they even were able to get here. So they trying that slowly but surely in this area now. <clears throat> but we got to start. We got to start letting our politicians know it's okay to take a hard line stance against this. Be like, yo, I'm not like that white man talking about they got cantaloupes the size of calves, uh, calves the size of cantaloupes because they bringing cocaine. I'm just like, hey, all these jobs at Burger King, my son could be working at one of them, but he can't when it's a whole family working at the McDonald's. You got a whole undocumented family working at the McDonald's. This nigga got an ID with his, with, with his tennis shoes showing. That shit just say Juan Carlos. He cashing checks all over the place. I got to cash a check. I need credit card, ID, social security card, drop of blood, hair samples, Mother made name, where my father descended from, all that type of stuff. Fucked up thing is, everything I named, I got it. But why I got to carry it all with me, I have no... Oh, nigga, here's my lineage. <laughs> here's my birth certificate. My, my father, he was a sub foreman at a job that was like, Gerald, uh, here your crew. My father said, they give me this crew of fuck ups. I got to teach all these dumb of, I ain't teaching them shit. They fuck something up. I'm going to tell them you shouldn't have gave me these stupid motherfuckers. He say, so I called my motherfucker, I called Mike. Mike Lee or something or something. Mike something. He say, an Asian dude walk up. My father go, all right, I ain't called you. He said, no, I'm Mike. I'm Michael. Mike? <laughs> they ain't make no, fuck you Asian. How the fuck your name Mike? The fuck are you talking about? Man, ain't supposed to be Chung Lee or some shit like that. <laughs> Sao Wang, some shit like that. <laughs> he said, nah, motherfucker, you letting them rename you. What's your mother's name? What's your father's name? That ain't their name. <laughs> the dude, the dude. Lin Zhao, something like that. That's all right. That's your name. That's okay. Fuck you, run around talking about your name, Mike. For ain't hey, no goddamn Mike. Mike Wong. <laughs> no, no. The stereotype ain't crazy. The brainwashing is crazy. Why would you change your kid's name? 
You know Bam Adebayo was born here. Right, exactly, Showtime. The brainwashing is crazy. Did they just change their name, fit in now? I'm an ordinary white guy named Mike. Because that's what they think they are. I knew a Vietnamese broad that thought she was white. Bitch had a cleft lip, even had tint to her skin. Oh, no, I see myself as white. Okay. I said, I know how to look at you now. Oh, no, that's not racist. I said, if you white, you are. I said, you're a part of the imperialist society if you decide to be white. Remember that. She looked at me. I said, all right, we had no more words. I never talked to that bitch. <laughs> right. I, I'm telling you. Mm-mm. Very few of them names translate to English. And if they do, they end up in sentences that don't make sense, like a Bad Bunny song. Cause if you, you know, cause you know, if you translate a bad bunny song, it don't rhyme, and it makes even less sense. Let me try to read the Booker T song in English. Listen, listen. I'll make them dance La Puela. And whoever don't dance, their hair shall be messed. <laughs> Sons of a bitch, don't provoke me. Read the numbers to educate yourself. I don't make songs, I make anthems so that they don't expire. In this genre, I'm a Hadouken. And they became the and they became extinct like dinosaurs. Before you turn me off, the sun will the sun will. We came up and the broke, we came up and broke the elevator. The prep that Barbara saw through them. Ah, damn bunny. Now I look at you all from above and from afar. Hey, I don't answer DMs. No, talk to my management, but they'll also ignore. I promise, I don't want to become a killer. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I fucked all of my crushes. Shh. I'm getting bored of fucking two. And I'm a Millie without using Richard. Yankee will retire and we will switch. <laughs> I'm going to be the boss and they're going to sign me. My name is always going to be heard. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Because <laughs> I'm at my peak. I'm at my peak. That's the only thing that rhymes. I'm a king, champion, Booker T. I'm at my peak. I'm at my peak. Look what I became. Look at me. Look at me. Hey, that's the only thing that Ryan, I don't know what the fuck Bad Bunny was talking about. But in Spanish, My composer award bothers you all, but no one composes anymore. None of these people write their own songs, so don't get excited. The most sold albums of this fucking year. I took them to school. The whole world trying to make it his sequel. 
Stay in line. No one strains them. Hey, bro, that shit is trash in English. In English, that is trash. Really. In English, that is trash. And you know it's the truth. But look, watch this. See? Now, this don't crank, though, watch. speak Spanish. That shit just sound like Latino gibberish. <laughs> Black of me think all this sound like what? Fucking nothing up like a duca. The maca the nigga the duca. Squirt my nahucha. The biggest of the the manucha. What the nigga? Taco Belly they got the chalupa. Chipotle got the the boda. Went to Chipotle. Got me your bulla. Then I went to the roller fajita. Come on now, see me a mother masita. Senorita, on me pita. Like to eat the slice of pizza. Bombisita. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I just made a bad buddy song. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me, a bunch of Spanish gibberish. <laughs> With a gangster ass beat. Let me see if it works. Let me see if that really works. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Because Felix, you ain't here. Tell me if I say something. <laughs> Felix probably mad at me. Felix probably mad at me. I probably said some offensive shit. I didn't mean to say nothing offensive. <laughs> I'm just saying, and you know, <laughs> I don't want to say nothing, you know, I'm just trying to see, I'm, this is a, that was just an experiment, okay, ah. 
Ay, caramba. Boy, 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 bonita, señorita, gather the slice of pizza, bobadito, rice and beans, I like to eat, uh. run for the water, hurt my feet, uh. hey, hey, boy, when I did to, papa says, see the job, I'm a fajita, roll a tortilla, smoking the marijuana, got the fajita, Hit her from the bedrita, man, I see the bojita, smoking with the boricuas. Mommy, papi, see, si, yes, caramba, too. Roll with me, ay caramba, that is what ay caramba do. Hey, hey, the LVZ, uh, Espanol, Espanol, LVZ. Who I be? Who I be? Espanol, Espanol, LVZ. See, 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 see. So, really, you know, with a good beat, just, we don't know. I, I could have been. I didn't know to chop if you with him, then you touch him. I used to slap his music till I found him. He was touching kids. Weird niggas all up on my line. Where'd you find this beat? And all the glitter from your neck is binding me. Sure. I guess it's time to speak my truth now. This nina got a dick on it. I'm aiming at that RuPaul. Dilated pupils, four fives, no rumors. Mr. Big Bang Buddha, that's Mr. Big Bang Gucci. Big Bang Gucci face, Mei Ling, Susan Lee. Oh God, I just love just what you do to me. My hit man actually went to school with me. I don't want no... Come on, man. Come on, y'all. Look, I'm trying to say, somebody just called me. I don't know who that was. <laughs> Dang me. Come on, man. I don't think none of the, none of my Hispanics who rode with me, my, my Afro-Latinos should be. Roll them with me. They know that shit was fire. <laughs> Come on, man. You got the love that Espanol, Espanol, L E Z. Tell me that I don't sound something like his. Same thing. <laughs> they, they don't be making taco pizza in Mexico. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. You want a better, you want a more accurate one. Okay. That's it. You want a more accurate one. Okay. Okay. You want a more accurate. That's what you want. You want a more accurate. You want a more accurate one. Okay. Six. Nacho Goya. 
taco fajita. Roll with senorita. No, I don't roll a pita. It's the tortilla. Got to roll my fajita. Extra rice and beans agree. Uh, hey, hey, yes. I roll around with my fellow. Knock out Modelo. Like um, Julio Cesar Chavez. Drinking no guava matches. Yes, I'm like Camancho. Running across the border with my hancho. Hey, hey, me no speak no English if you do not got dinero. I do not be hearing folks, especially if they talking jokes about my people. We work together. But when I see you, I'm George Zimmerman. It's whatever. Look at me. Look at me. Espanol, Espanol, Ted Cruz. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the man. I'm the man. Booker T. There you go, sir. There you go. Was that better? Was that better? <laughs> oh, Lord. Is that better? Are you niggas happy now? Cash out. Dollar sign one of easy. Only one man knows how to do that. <laughs> Sammy Sosa, Alex. Alex Alejandro de Rocha. <laughs> the cartel bring of a coca. Mary Juana Smoka. <laughs> no license, hope police don't pull me over. Sayonara. <laughs> Sorry, let me stop. Let me stop. I'm just stupid. Don't play this to the children. I don't want. When I die, I show this to the children. <laughs> show the children. <laughs> show the children that the great LVZ. Love being black. It told you to be proud. I made two Spanish hits already. Look at it. I'm the. For real. Who the raw? I. I mean, honestly, I created Hispanic rap. <laughs> Fat Joe. I do Hispanic rap better than you. How, how that is? Me terracha, caca, croca, me roca, me tocha, me toca, with the coca. So let me stop. Let me stop. Now, Felix, I'm sorry, Felix. I'm just saying, you know damn well Bad Bunny was saying gibberish in English. <laughs> you know in English, none of that shit rhymes. You come over here, you play Bad Bunny, it makes absolutely no sense. You know, what the fuck is this nigga just getting shit off his chest? This is a conversation. But I guess like gangster gangster, here's a little something about a nigga like me, I guess. Sutori nigar su I guess penitentiary, you know, don't. <laughs> El Jello. Huevos <laughs> y noces y noches. El Jello. <laughs> Whatever the Spanish word for gangster, gangster is and shit. 
<laughs> what would gangsta gangsta sound like in Spanish? What the fuck? This shit don't rhyme, but the beat rock. Some of the shit we say ain't even words in Spanish. <laughs> hey, look. That's the beautiful thing about hip hop, which black people created. Some of the shit we say is not words. We made words. Gat. A gat ain't a... <laughs> What's the Spanish word for gat? El gato. <laughs> that's, that's not a word. It's not even an English word yet. Gat became a word. None of that was introduced by uh, non-foundationals, to be honest. It, when we think about even the lexicon of hip-hop, when we talk about the uh, the book of rap, how you speak, the hip-hop the hip and urban dictionary, a lot of joints, like junk in D.C., junk. Junk ain't no word until you come to D.C., and then a nigga like me put it in the junk. I got four junks with me. You don't know what I'm talking about, but everybody know what I'm talking about. Even Devin the Dude said it on that uh, joint with Yuck Mouth. He said, and you know, DC knows the deal. I like to go go to the junk and chill. Right. I said, that's right, Devin. That shit You know when your don't you hate when your phone get full of text? Hell yeah! Like, share, subscribe. Stop hating. I'm going to play tennis on them for a minute. Go back and forth on each channel for a second. By July, I should be back in the swing of things. Getting everything back situated. Good news, Jabari. Man, they done moved. Look, I found out they moved the school from... 
sixth grade because most of the time kids graduate from six to go to seventh to be in junior high school or middle school. Now they've changed it to they graduate out the fifth. Middle school is sixth and seventh and eighth. And I think high school is ninth, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I already said Earl, bro. And it's good for boxing. I want to see it. I'm going to see it. July 29th. Prepare to watch a show. You're going to watch two of the best do their thing. you going to watch Bud be the tactician, picking, popping, looking for mistakes. You're going to be watching Earl be a bull and determined and forcing action when Terrence would rather be making decisions and you got to figure out whose style is going to conquer who because I agree with FYF that he's a better boxer but by how much you understand Because you can be a better boxer and still lose. Don't mean you the better fighter that night. Yeah, you know how to box better, but he was the better fighter. Who knew how to box. Now, both of them, I think, have a high skill set. I think Earl Earl's advantage is that that constant body attack in the chest, the arm, the shoulders, the stomach, the rib cage, the liver, all types of body shots. He just goes at it. And he wears you down. He wears you down because he's constantly coming at you. And yet he get hit. Everybody gets hit. But he reacts in a good way. And I, I, the closest thing I see in a buzz, he's... See, that's the thing. Y'all got that twisted about Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford don't do all that slipping. The thing Terrence Crawford do, Terrence Crawford get in good position, let his hands go at a certain time, and it's against certain fighters, if we being honest. Because, like, uh, Kell Brook was hitting him. It's just he waited for Kell Brook to throw the thing that he was hitting him with. Then he moved and bang. Who I think the best since Floyd? Right now, who's been the best fighter since Floyd? I hate to say it. You would have to say Canelo Alvarez. Because he like the only one who actually still fighting, like right after the Floyd era. Right after the Floyd era, you had Iris Landy Lord, Austin Trout, 
Gennady Golovkin, Andre Ward, uh, maybe it would be Andre Ward. It would probably be Andre Ward. Andre Ward, um, No, Floyd last good fight was the Canelo fight. Floyd last big fight was the Canelo fight. Even though uh, the Marcos Maidana fights were big fights too. Because they were tough fights and they were good fights. But it was the end of both of their careers. So I would have to go with the Canelo fight because he still kept fighting. And he's still fighting to this day. So it had to be Andre Ward and Canelo Alvarez. Oh, who I think a better matchup since Floyd and uh, Canelo or Floyd and Pacquiao. Wilder Fury was a good matchup. I wanted that. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, this it. Only other fight I would have wanted to see was uh, this it. This is the biggest matchup. Period. This is the biggest matchup since Pacquiao Floyd, if that's what you ask me. Yeah. This is that. This the uh Leonard Hearn. Yeah. Stevenson can be hanged. Stevenson can be hanged. He can. Mm -hmm. Now, will he do it? Or do I think he will do it? That's a different thing. Oh, yeah, this is the biggest sense, Floyd. If that's what he asked me, yeah, this is the biggest sense, Floyd. It was some other pretty big matchups, but this is the biggest one. People like to make the heavyweights the big fights, but really the best big fights be middleweight, welterweight, and, and sometimes like lightweight, like 135, 140. Because like Leonard and Duran or Leonard and Benitez, Floyd and uh, Floyd versus Diego Corrales was a good fight, was a big fight because they was both undefeated and Floyd was supposed to lose. I won so much money. Um, Roy Jones, James Tony was a big fight. For youngins, uh, of course, the biggest ones was Leonard versus Hearns, which was 140, 145. Hagler Leonard, of course, which was middleweight. Um, Hearns Hagler, middleweight. Uh, Trinidad De La Hoya, welterweight. Hearns Leonard, all of that. We all 
only got like three big heavyweight fights that people caught up. Yeah. That's the truth. The heavyweights have been dead since Ali won. And Tyson. Tyson, uh, Bo, Holyfield, Lennox Lewis, Razor Ruddick, uh, Ray Mercer, Tommy Morrison, David Tour was second tier type guys. All of them are second tiers. That was the last of good heavyweights. Why you think the Klitschko brothers start winning? Think about it. The only people they could find was Ukrainian bums. All they could find was Ukrainian and Russian bum. Corey Sanders won the World Heavyweight Championship by knocking out, uh, yeah, what was it, Vitaly? No, Vladimir. Yeah, Lennox Lewis was the end. Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury just rewoke the heavyweight division up. And we looking at it and we still say everybody bombs except them three. Mm-hmm. Yes, Felix. Vitaly was good. He was tough. He lost to Chris Bird. <laughs> he lost to Chris Bird because of shoulder injury. Chris Bird was slapping the shit out of him. He was all right. He got more props for standing in there with Lennox Lewis and getting his face ripped apart with uppercuts and hooks and not getting knocked out. He had a good chin. He was slow. He had tough. He had a good punch. He had a good punch, a solid punch, and he was tough. He had sound techniques. He worked behind the jab. He worked behind the jab. And he, bang, he had George Foreman, you with that, up, hit you with that joint. But he was slow. His feet was in iron. Even though he had good footwork for a big man, his feet were <clears throat> planted on the ground. So he kind of slid, slid. Vladimir was the uh, more athletic one because he could move around more, but he was chinny. He could punch good, but he was chinny. He was always up high. He ain't know what he wanted to be. He was just getting whacked out. Wham. He was rolling this big ass. Wham. Wham. He talking about but he said Vitaly was always the better brother to him. To me too. Vladimir had the better the longer career, but Vitaly was always to me the better boxer. Vladimir used to get slid. Then he got with, uh, remember, then he got with Emmanuel Stewart and he started fighting like Lennox Lewis did. At the hit. Remember, Lennox Lewis used to get slid. Lennox Lewis used to get slid. Wham. Oliver McCall hit that man. That man. 
That man did the biz market. Hit the canvas. That man was doing that biz marquee. Hit that man. That man was like this. He said. Like, <laughs> Hit the ground. He was on the ground. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, he did marry that little actress. <laughs> she used to be on everything. Now she she said, I married Vitaly. I'm good. Fuck him. I mean Vladimir, I'm good. Right. And let him hit him in the face. But Emmanuel Stewart left Oliver McCall corner and went to, yeah, Hayden, pa yeah, that's her name. Emmanuel Stewart left Oliver McCall's corner and went to train Lennox. And after that, Lennox never got, like, knocked out. For real, for real, again, till he lost his motherfucking patience. And after Lennox retired, Vladimir started using him. And she used to be on all the little slasher movies and on something else. Yeah, Holyfield was knocked out. Riddick Bow beat him by stoppage. Uh, who else beat him by stoppage? Um, didn't James Tony stop him? I think James Tony beat him by stoppage. I think he was stopped like twice. You look it up, make sure. I think it was a uh, scream she was in. Was it a scream she was in? Scream three? Was she in Scream Three? Is what I was talking about. Oh, anyway, let me see. Um, Evander Holyfield. Yeah, I think he was knocked out twice. Yep, twice. 44 wins, 10 losses, 2 by knockout. Riddick Bow, James Tony. Oh. Uh. Think LVZ forgot his boxing. Both them fights, I knew he was going to lose, too. That's what's funny. Of course, I rooted for him for Riddick Bo. He was living in the area by then. Um, and then James Tony. I had just been liking James Tony. Forever since he lost the ID, he lost the Roy Jones. I liked him more, his defense. I paid more attention to his defense. How good his defense was. I was like, damn. 
I why well, ain't noticed that? Cause I rooted against him, and I was right when Roy Jones beat him. So. Yeah, but Mike Tyson was full of shit. He wasn't headbutting him like that. He was getting at Mike shit. A lot of them just, see, butts. That's a butt. That's a butt. Big as your head is, Mike. Mike said it. That nigga was getting at my ass, man. He just wasn't scared. He had that big ass head. That shit was taking them big shots. Now... If anybody talk about a head, but it's Rockman when Holyfield put another head on that nigga. I had a broken neck. It was spinal, but I broke my back. My back. What do you mean I had a broken back? It's spinal, what? Cause I was lifting weights with these big discs. <laughs> I broke my back. It was spinal. I never forget that shit. Like, what the fuck, Jim Gray? What the fuck, you? <laughs> Jim Gray almost said, "Nigga, what?" Fuck you talking about something you broke your back spinal. Nah, nigga. Rock my own ass every time I see that injury. Yeah, that head joint, that head, but that nigga had it. Yeah. That's some shit you don't want. <laughs> that nigga had the pocket head deluxe. He had that pumpkin head deluxe. He gave him that deluxe pumpkin head deluxe. <laughs> this nigga trying to bite you, Jack. <laughs> This nigga literally trying to eat the jabs. <laughs> this nigga trying to eat punches for real. That's not going to work. But land them up on your jaws. This nigga really trying to eat punches. <laughs> Better close your mouth, hold your lips. If I chip them teethuses. <laughs> Them just be like daggers. Oh, oh, oh. That shit crazy. Then everybody else he lost to just because his ass was too old and had no business fighting. Holyfield, I still. 
advice. No, you can't. Sit your old ass down. Right. What is he trying to do? This nigga gonna be in this. He want to get buried with boxing gloves on. He buried in a boxing robe and truck. Just bury me in my trunk. I only feel this. Sit his ass down. That's still my guy, though. He fought hard. That was my man, the warrior. Holy fit. Yeah, but that nigga shit talking about. Yeah, yeah, I know he had them child support payments, y'all. Fuck that. He talking about that he's the Mr. Anti-Abortion. He was, uh, he, the nigga should have been Mr. Pro Condom. That nigga owe half of Atlanta child support. He was Christian, Republican, or whatever. Pro life, nigga. You should have been pro condom, nigga. Pro pull out ain't working. Pro pull out wasn't working. I'm quite sure he tried that with one out of the eleven. He should have sorted. That. that don't work either. Yeah. I know one thing. His driver's license is anti good, probably, if he don't hurry up pay that child support. Man, let me get the hell off of here, man. LBZ, man. Much love to y'all. Appreciate y'all coming through. I'll holler at y'all a little later. You know how we do. LBZ.